All right, guys, this is definitely a funky watch. This is the U-Boat Rainbow Orange Dial. And you can see that it's just wild. Super reflective, too. It's hard to get good pictures and or video of this. I will go outside and try to get some video outside. I don't know that I have any sunlight because it's snowing out. But this thing in natural light really, really goes crazy. Definitely in sunlight. Unfortunately, I may have missed my opportunity to do so. Here's the box that it comes in. Even the box that it comes in. It's like this super soft lined box inside and out. It has a probably one of the best feeling microfiber cloths I've handled that comes with it. A little bit of credentials. And then the watch. Let's get into the watch. So you are looking at a, at a 44 millimeter case. 51 lug to lug you can see fully brushed and look how tall that mineral crystal it's not a sapphire crystal the mineral crystal total thickness 16.4 but most of that is that crystal 22 millimeter lug width eight and a half millimeter oversized crown it is a push pull crown and in this configuration it weighs in at 128 gram Nice strap, very easy to use, easy to adjust. All you have to do is take a tool, pry this guy up like so, and then you can move it to the desired position, lock it back down, and then to attach it on your wrist, because I'm probably not gonna be able to show it when I put it on the wrist, is you loop it around, you hook that bar in there, flop this piece down, and then you have your fold over keeper. Very simple, I like that design. It's a little weird taking it on and off because you do have a chance of like dropping the watch, but uh, just do it in a controlled environment. Here is the case back, stainless steel, the reference 8469, only 50 meter water resist, full liquid field, it has a low viscosity uh, oil in it. I'm not 100% sure what they used. U-Boat Rainbow, and you can see the screw in the back here, right here. This is the first generation of this. If you undo that screw, that'll drain the oil out. Then you can take the case back off, change the battery, put the case back back on, and then fill the oil back in. So if you've harvested the oil, you might need to add some, but I don't know exactly what oil they use. So typically you're going to have to send this, this generation, these style of the U-boat in to have the battery change done. Current models are more like a swatch where there's a separate capsule containment over to one side or wherever it is uh, that you can just change the battery without getting into the oil so that feature on the newer one is nice but uh, if I'm being honest with you guys and myself I would uh, I would just capture it I would refill it myself I'd get a syringe um, I would uh, do a little better research and figure out what kind of oil it is just in case I need to add a little bit but I've dealt with like RC car uh, shock oil and everything like that. It's probably something similar to that. I really I can't imagine it's anything special You just need to find out exactly what it is. I'm sure that information could be had But uh, once you do that, yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to clean it all up and a Little bit of work and I think you'd be fine So you're not dealing with rocket science here. Uh, the movement inside is a quartz movement It's a 712.3 model from Rhonda. There's no sweeping seconds hand um, partly because that could get complicated when it's trying to turn through the oil. So nice slow moving hands for the hour and minute is going to be an easier, easier uh, function of a watch capsule in oil. I'm going to try to zoom in and capture some of this stuff, guys. There's a lot of reflectivity going on. But you can see that almost like metallic looking orange dial in there. And you can see how bright and vivid it gets. But uh, you have a printed 12, you have some printed indices, but you definitely have a printed 12, 4, and 8. And then you have applied indices at the 2, 6, and 10. So that's a little interesting layout in there. And then if we can catch it at the right light, there's actually, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it, guys. There's actually, you can see, see those holes. There's holes in the dial on each side, and I think that's for the oil to free flow from behind to the front of the movement and everything, or the dial and everything. You can see visibility on this at all angles is just wild. And then, yeah, you definitely have that little bubble thing going on there. That is, by design, 
I think they do it as more of like a, um, it's only 50 meter water resist, but I don't know if that bubble is intentional just because of, it almost acts like a bladder, like a, a different pressures and everything like that. So you don't worry about, you know, positive or negative uh, pressures from elevation or whatever you're doing to potentially push out of the gasket. Because um, you got to keep in mind, this is, I have actually have no idea how they do this crown system because when you pull out the crown to adjust the time, it doesn't leak any oil. So like, how does it even do that? Because, I mean, you'd have to gasket that up pretty good or what, I don't know how they did it exactly, but when you pull the crown out to adjust the time, not that you're gonna be doing that a ton, but uh, it, it doesn't leak oil at all. So that's, I don't know. To me, that's actually kind of impressive. As simple as that might seem to some penny, to many people, I just, I know that wasn't like super easy to do. So whether it's just done with good gaskets and many of them or what, but here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And there's no loom on this, but like I said, the light play on this thing is just ridiculous. Uh, and my buddy Joe, who sent this one over, actually has another one. He calls it like his vampire one. It's more of a, a black and red theme to it. So regardless of whichever model you end up getting, they have some serious light play. They're definitely a conversation piece and just a fun wild card piece, I would think. Price points on these, uh, they're not cheap. I think you can get them for around $900,000, something like that, right in that range. I think if you shop around, it looks like Joe actually picked this one up off of Joma, and I think he paid just under $700 for it. So you can get them, you know, gray market for a little bit cheaper. And then I'm not sure what the newer capsule ones cost, but all right. So that's enough of this video, guys. Let me uh, see if I can get some outside shots and I'll tag those on in the end.